The most shocking thing about the way the Ghislaine Maxwell indictment reads is that it seems most, if not all, of the information in that indictment had been known for years, if not decades. <laughs> Viva Fry, Montreal litigator turned YouTuber, and today we are breaking down the Ghislaine Maxwell indictment in the now world infamous situation. Now, a few first things before we get started. I know people pronounce her name Ghislaine Maxwell, but I am from Quebec. It is pronounced Ghislaine Maxwell, and that is how I'm going to be pronouncing it throughout this vlog. Second thing, I just did a live stream with Robert Barnes where he delved into such detail that far exceeds the four corners of Ghislaine Maxwell's indictment. If you haven't seen that live stream, give it a watch, but if you don't have time for the entire live stream, I posted a highlight right here. Go give that a watch. It's slightly over a half an hour. And the third thing by popular demand, we are now converting all of the live streams with Robert Barnes into podcast format, which is on the podcast called Viva and Barnes Law for the People, which you can find on Podbean, iTunes, Connect, whatever it is, Apple and Google. I will post all relevant links in the pinned comment below. Go check it out, subscribe, do whatever it is that people do with podcasts. And now getting into Ghislaine Maxwell's indictment. United States District Court, Southern District of New York, United States of America versus Ghislaine Maxwell defendant, sealed indictment, count one, conspiracy to entice minors to travel to engage in illegal sex acts. The grand jury charges. Overview. And you know what? One more thing before we get started. Everything about this situation is disgusting. The conduct of the predators is disgusting. The fact that it took so long for something to happen and charges to be pressed is disgusting. The fact that the mainstream media seems to have covered up for some of the people involved in the story is disgusting. It's disgusting, it's enraging, and reading through this affidavit should make the ordinary person very, very angry. The charges set forth herein stem from the role of Ghislaine Maxwell, the defendant, in the sexual exploitation and abuse of multiple minor girls by Jeffrey Epstein. In particular, from at least in or about 1994 up to and including at least in or about 1997, Maxwell assisted, facilitated, and contributed to Jeffrey Epstein's abuse of minor girls by, among other things, helping Epstein to recruit, groom, and ultimately abuse victims known to Maxwell and Epstein to be under the age of 18. The victims were as young as 14 years old when they were groomed and abused by Maxwell and Epstein, both of whom knew that certain victims were in fact under the age of 18. Moreover, in an effort to conceal her crimes, Maxwell repeatedly lied when questioned about her conduct, including in relation to some of the minor victims described herein when providing testimony under oath in 2016. As a matter of the factual background, the indictment then goes on to explain how Ghislaine and Jeffrey Epstein had a personal and professional relationship and how between the years of 1994 and 1997, the years in question she was paid by Epstein to manage his various properties. The indictment then goes on to allege that in the context of their relationship, Jeffrey and Ghislaine were photographed together on multiple occasions, and then goes on to show one such photograph because a photograph is worth a thousand words. Now, an obligatory parenthesis to open up, whether we like it or not, this is an indictment. All of these allegations are just that, mere allegations. Everyone is innocent until proven guilty in a court of law, so nobody is guilty, no facts have been proven, these are just allegations in an indictment. That being said, people know what they know, they think what they think, and oftentimes that will not change with a conviction or an acquittal in a criminal court of law. The indictment then goes on to describe the pattern and the modus operandi of the predators, how they did what they did, and this is really the infuriating part to read of this entire thing. Beginning in at least 1994, Ghislaine Maxwell, the defendant, enticed and groomed multiple minor girls to engage in sex acts with Jeffrey Epstein through a variety of means and methods, including but not limited to the following. A. Maxwell first attempted to befriend some of Epstein's minor victims prior to their abuse, including by asking the victims about their lives, their schools, and their families. Maxwell and Epstein would spend time building friendships with minor victims by, for example, taking minor victims to the movies or shopping. Some of these outings would involve Maxwell and Epstein spending time together with a minor victim, while some would involve Maxwell or Epstein spending time alone with a minor victim. B. Having developed a rapport with the victim, Maxwell would try to normalize sexual abuse for a minor victim by, among other things, discussing sexual topics, undressing in front of the victims, being present when a minor victim was undressed, and or being present for sex acts involving the minor victim and Epstein. C. Maxwell's presence during minor victims' interactions with Epstein, including interactions where the minor victim was undressed or that involved sex acts with Epstein, helped put the victims at ease because an adult woman was present. For example, in some instances, Maxwell would massage Epstein in front of a minor victim. In other instances, Maxwell encouraged minor victims to provide massages to Epstein, including sexualized massages during which a minor victim would be fully or partially nude. Many of those massages resulted in Epstein sexually abusing the minor victims. The indictment then goes on to allege that Epstein gave the girls money or financial assistance, how Maxwell encouraged them to accept the assistance, which led to the victims thinking that they were somehow indebted to Epstein for all of his assistance. Now, I don't use the word evil very often, but this indictment describes the pure evil of the scheme that Maxwell and Jeffrey 
Epstein had. They picked on the most vulnerable people on Earth, young kids. I would imagine young kids who came from troubled homes and were looking for some sort of parental affirmation, love, and caring from other people. They exploited these kids by letting them think that they were their friends, only to abuse them afterwards. And it really goes to show you that the most dangerous predators on Earth are the ones who pretend to be your best friend. Maxwell and Epstein's victims. Between approximately in or about 1994 and in or about 1997, Ghislaine Maxwell, the defendant, facilitated Jeffrey Epstein's access to minor victims by, among other things, inducing and enticing and aiding and abetting the inducement and enticement of multiple minor victims. Victims were groomed and or abused at multiple locations, including the following. A multi-story private residence on the Upper East Side of Manhattan, New York, owned by Epstein, the New York residence, which is depicted in the following photograph. An estate in Palm Beach, Florida, owned by Epstein, the Palm Beach residence, which is depicted in the following photograph. A ranch in Santa Fe, New Mexico, owned by Epstein, the New Mexico residence, which is depicted in the following photograph. Maxwell's personal residence in London, England. Apparently, Epstein's New York residence alone was worth $77 million. And if anybody hadn't asked questions about how Epstein had amassed such ridiculous wealth, now is the time you should be asking yourself that question. The indictment then goes on to describe the abuse that was inflicted on three minor victims. We only need to cover one because they are basically the exact same allegations for all three victims. Maxwell met minor victim one when minor victim one was approximately 14 years old. Maxwell subsequently interacted with minor victim one on multiple occasions at Epstein's residence, knowing that minor victim one was under the age of 18 at the time. During these interactions, which took place between approximately 1994 and 1997, Maxwell groomed minor victim one to engage in sexual acts with Epstein through multiple means. First, Maxwell and Epstein attempted to befriend Minor Victim 1, taking her to the movies and on shopping trips. Maxwell also asked Minor Victim 1 about school, her classes, her family, and other aspects of her life. Maxwell then sought to normalize inappropriate and abusive conduct by, among other things, undressing in front of Minor Victim 1 and being present when Minor Victim 1 undressed in front of Epstein. Within the first year after Maxwell and Epstein met Minor Victim 1, Epstein began sexually abusing Minor Victim 1. Maxwell was present for and involved in some of this abuse. In particular, Maxwell involved Minor Victim 1 in group sexualized massages of Epstein. During those group sexualized massages, Maxwell and or Minor Victim 1 would engage in sex acts with Epstein. Epstein and Maxwell both encouraged Minor Victim 1 to travel to Epstein's residences in both New York and Florida. As a result, Minor Victim 1 was sexually abused by Epstein in both New York and Florida. Minor Victim 1 was enticed to travel across state lines for the purposes of sexual encounters with Epstein, and Maxwell was aware that Epstein engaged in sexual activity with Minor Victim 1 after Minor Victim 1 traveled to Epstein's properties, including in the context of a sexualized massage. And it is effectively the same evil allegations as relates to how Maxwell and Jeffrey exploited and abused Minor Victim 2 and Minor Victim 3. The indictment then gets into allegations as to how Ghislaine tried to conceal her conduct in the context of civil litigation that was instituted in 2016, which is going to justify the charges of perjury in this indictment. In or around 2016, in the context of a deposition as part of civil litigation, Ghislaine Maxwell, the defendant, repeatedly provided false and perjurous statements under oath regarding, among other subjects, her role in facilitating the abuse of minor victims by Jeffrey Epstein, including some of the specific events and acts of abuse detailed above. The factual allegations having now been detailed in the indictment, it gets into the actual charges. Statutory allegations. From at least in or about 1994 up to and including in or about 1997 in the Southern District of New York and elsewhere, Ghislaine Maxwell, the defendant, Jeffrey Epstein, and others known and unknown willfully and knowingly did combine, conspire, confederate, and agree together and with each other to commit an offense against the United States to wit, enticement in violation of Title 18 United States Code Section 2422. Now, for the non-lawyers out there and for the lawyers who may not know, to wit is legal talk for namely. And when this indictment refers to others known and unknown, you know that there are a lot of other people out there right now who are extremely nervous. Overt acts. In furtherance of the conspiracy and to affect the illegal object thereof, the following overt acts, among others, were committed in the Southern District of New York and elsewhere. And then the indictment just basically repeats facts that were previously alleged earlier on that we already covered. Between in or about 1994 and in or about 1995, when minor victim three was under the age of 18, Maxwell encouraged minor victim 3 to provide massages to Epstein in London, England, knowing that Epstein intended to sexually abuse minor victim 3 during those massages. Title 18, United States Code, Section 371. Count two, enticement of a minor to travel to engage in illegal sex acts. Again, the indictment just repeats facts that had already been alleged as to how Ghislaine affected and facilitated the abuse of these three minor victims. The indictment then goes on to detail other charges and the overt acts to support those charges. Count three, conspiracy to transport minors with intent to engage in criminal sexual activity. Overt acts. Count four, transportation of a minor with intent to engage in criminal sexual activity. From at least in or about 1994 up to and including in or about 1997 in the 
Southern District of New York and elsewhere. Ghislaine Maxwell, the defendant, knowingly did transport an individual who had not attained the age of 18 in interstate and foreign commerce with the intent that the individual engage in sexual activity for which a person can be charged with a criminal offense and attempted to do so and aided and abetted the same to wit Maxwell arranged for minor victim one to be transported from Florida to New York, New York on multiple occasions with the intention that minor victim one would engage in one or more sex acts with Jeffrey Epstein in violation of New York Penal Law Section 130.55. Then the indictment moves into charge five for perjury because Ghislaine Maxwell testified under oath in the context of a 2016 civil lawsuit that she was unaware of any abuse that Jeffrey Epstein inflicted on these minor victims. On or about April 22nd, 2016 in the Southern District of New York, Ghislaine Maxwell, the defendant, having taken an oath to testify truthfully in a deposition in connection with a case then pending before the United States District Court for the Southern District of New York under docket number 15 CIV 7344, knowingly made false material declarations to wit Maxwell gave the following underlined false testimony. Did Jeffrey Epstein have a scheme to recruit underage girls for sexual massages? If you know. I don't know what you're talking about. List all of the people under the age of 18 that you interacted with at any of Jeffrey's properties. I'm not aware of anybody that I interacted with other than obviously the plaintiff who was 17 at this point. Count six, perjury. Were you aware of the presence of sex toys or devices used in sexual activities in Mr. Epstein's Palm Beach house? No, not that I recall. Do you know whether Mr. Epstein possessed sex toys or devices used in sexual activities? No. Other than yourself and the blonde and brunette that you have identified as having been involved in three-way sexual activities, with whom did Mr. Epstein have sexual activities? I wasn't aware that he was having sexual activities with anyone when I was with him other than myself. I want to be sure that I'm clear. Is it your testimony that in the 1990s and 2000s you were not aware that Mr. Epstein was having sexual activities with anyone other than yourself and the blonde and brunette on those few occasions when they were involved with you? That is my testimony, that is correct. Is it your testimony that you've never given anybody a massage? I have not given anyone a massage. You never gave Mr. Epstein a massage, is that your testimony? That is my testimony. You never gave minor victim two a massage, is your testimony? I never gave minor victim two a massage. Now this part of the indictment and the charges of perjury are very interesting because Ghislaine Maxwell's answers are what we call equivocal answers. I don't really remember, I'm not sure, etc., etc., and they are hard to prove as being false for the purposes of perjury. It is very difficult to prove an answer of not that I recall as being false, false enough for the purposes of a charge of perjury but you have to assume that they have sufficient evidence to in fact substantiate these charges. You have to imagine they have the evidence to substantiate these charges. You have to imagine that Ghislaine knows they have the evidence to substantiate these charges, which is why she might apparently be ready to name names. But that is the indictment. It is very difficult, if not outright disgusting, to read, to see how people exploit the most vulnerable of the vulnerable. And if there's one thing to take away from this, other than the fact that people can be disgustingly evil, it is how to identify this type of predatorial behavior so that one can avoid it. So that is it. I will be following this story as it develops. People are already making their predictions as to what they think is going to happen based on what has already happened in the past, but we'll see where this goes. And with that said, if you like my videos and you like my content, please be sure to like, share, subscribe, hit the notification bell, drop a comment in the comments section below because it feeds the algorithm. If you want to support the channel, all of these support links are in the pinned comment. We've got merch, PayPal, Subscribestar, Patreon, YouTube memberships. Everybody who supports the channel gets sneak peeks of my vlogs to the extent that I can get them out early enough. But above all else, take care of yourselves. Check in on your friends and family. Make sure everyone around you is doing well. Learn how to identify predators and avoid them at all costs. And now you know your vlog. Peace out. Boom.